We are decluttering our homeschool. We are tidying up. We are reorganizing. We're going to go through um, our bookshelves, tidy up, declutter, all that sort of stuff. Um, lots of fun. Stick around to the end because I will take you through some of the things that are actually um, decluttered, some of the things that we weren't really that happy with and some of the things that we really, really loved and we wore it to, to bits and we're ready to pass it on to other people. So stick around for that as well. Today's video is focused on decluttering. I'm taking you through my decluttering process um, of our school books and our, you know, just our reading our books and our textbooks and all the things. We're just going to have a bit of a clean out in anticipation for some new books coming in. I always like to do this seasonally because it really helps to keep our bookshelves uh, free of clutter and really purposeful with just the things that we're focusing on. So I try to keep things, you know, as purposeful as I can and um, really be intentional with the books that we actually purchase. Uh, so we use our library a lot. I'm feeling a bit of a shift in our homeschool um, approach lately um, and that's just the the joys of homeschooling isn't it? it it evolves into its own thing and I'm just noticing some of the organization methods that I've been using um, aren't really working as well for us at the moment so I'm looking at you know establishing some new approaches and things like that so I'm gonna start you know really thinking about that as I declutter and tidy up our space I'm just gonna start thinking about what I want to introduce and how I want to change things up uh, to just make homeschooling that little bit easier and tidying up that little bit easier as well. But first things first, when you're decluttering, if you're kind of thinking like, how do you even approach a bookshelf? Because bookshelves can be really intimidating. When I approach my bookshelves, now that said, mine are very minimal. I don't have a huge amount on my bookshelves, but that is only because I do this process. And the process is simply that when I know I'm going to be bringing in some new books and I am because we're going, we're needing some new books for some of our science in Blossom Aru, we're heading into our human body um, studies and I don't have the books that are required for that um, curriculum and I kind of, I, I want to get them. So I've looked into them. They look really good. I love Blossom and Roots books recommendations. They are keepers. So I definitely like to purchase them when I can. So uh, that said, that means that I know that I've got some big chunky books coming and I don't want my bookshelves to be um, overcrowded because for me and my children, for my children and I, we really uh, tend to just not see <laughs> things when they're cluttered they just don't stand out to us it's frustrating and it doesn't it doesn't allow us to you know when you think about overcrowded bookshelves you're not inclined to want to take that book out when you feel like everything's going to fall over or you know it's just not as inviting as when you see something laid out beautifully face front. Um, I like to have that ability to put my books face front um, you know to be able to see that entire book because that usually allows the kids to go, I want to pick that up. I want to read it. I want to look at it. So those are the kinds of things. Those are the kinds of approaches that I like to have. I like to be able to have space on the bookshelves for my kids' creations in, you know, science or whatever they're making and focuses and all that sort of stuff. Um, they're always creating and crafting. I want to put the things that they're really most proud of on display. Um, and they like that. They like having those things on display. It's a, it's a purposeful space for that reason. So those are the kinds of the reasons why um, I do the things that I do in, in decluttering and organization. It really is about being purposeful with our things and um, really loving what we have. So I won't delay any further. I'm procrastinating. I need to get started. Uh, the day is... <laughs> really moving fast today. I've lost track of time. So I need to get started and I'm going to do this as fast as possible. The first thing that I really tend to do is I follow Dana White. Um, she has some fantastic books. I'll link them in the description box below. So you look at the space that you want to organize and you take away what you can see, obviously, that does not belong. So whether it be something that you need to relocate and you literally relocate it to the place that it belongs 
in that moment. So you don't put it down and end up with a pile of stuff on the floor that you have to deal with at the end when you're finished. <laughs> I know I have done that a couple of times and it's, it's intimidating. It's overwhelming. Um, so the way I approach it is something it really helps because it means that if you have to get away, if you have to go and do something um, and you're not finished, it's not any worse off. You know, you don't have stuff everywhere. You're not left with a big pile of things that you have to come back to at some point, which let's be real, a lot of us don't come back to it. It just kind of sits there. So for me, it's a really big deal to just be able to follow her, her approach because it really works in the sense that you take, you look for rubbish first, look for rubbish, grab a bag and put all the rubbish in that bag, in that moment, put it in the bin. Okay. And then the next thing is go through and you take away the books that you don't want. You know, you don't, you don't want to keep anymore. You uh, put them in a box for donations and a box for whatever. Um, so for us, it'll be gifting to friends and then donations box for us, for some of our books and possibly a sell box as well. Cause there's a couple of curriculums that I may be able to resell and some readers and things like that. So that's what I'm doing today. So you can watch, um, my process with that and, um, and then I'll show you at the end what I've, what I've accomplished, what I've got going on. I've got, uh, oh, are you okay? You're really new here. What are you doing? I don't know if I've shown you our new kitten. Well, she's not really new anymore. Are you darling? So I'm starting to refine my categories a little bit. So I've got, um, I'm keeping in mind with what we've got coming up in terms of school. There is dust floating around everywhere. I don't know if you can see it, but it's just, it's inevitable when you're moving books around and things like that. I do dust, but it's, it's a little intense right now. I think the sun's streaming in just right at the, at the right angle. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully you can't see it. Um, but basically what we've got going on is just kind of like adventure Greek mythology or mythology type um, books. And then we've got uh, puberty and uh, human body type stuff. So that's going to be our next focus uh, in science. So that's why I've kind of displayed it in the way that I have. Um, I'm hoping to get like a couple of anatomy things. I've actually got a um, skeleton squishy body thing that we use when we first did our, when we first did our human anatomy, uh, I think it was about two years ago. So we're going to be revising a lot of the foundations of what we've learned, which is really easy. And, um, and then we're kind, kind of going to like go deeper with that now that the children are a bit older, um, really understanding things like um, thyroid and the way the brain works and nervous systems and things like that. So I'm really looking forward to that. So I've kind of added that shelf with the anticipation of a few more books because Blossom and Root have some fantastic books on that and I cannot wait to get them. So I want to make room and make sure that they're going to be displayed beautifully. Uh, and then we've kind of got our math stuff. So I'm starting to build on my math uh, kind of approaches and things like that. And uh, then I've got a bit of an art situation here and some geography stuff down here. So I'm just going to keep going and see where it takes me. It's, it's a bit of a process, but it really is just kind of taking, I've already taken out what we don't want. And now it's about kind of just rearranging things so that it fits in more of a way that I can see. 
I like to have things in categories because it allows me to see how much I actually have on that and whether I need all of it. Um, and if I have a full shelf on one particular subject, um, maybe I don't, I don't need any more. <laughs> so it allows me to see exactly what I have and I love that. And I also think that it's just really easy reference to go to that section and know when we're doing science and going, oh, I need a reference or something um, to kind of allow to answer a question that's been asked. I can go straight to this area and know that it's there. I love to color code it and turn it into a rainbow and all that sort of stuff, but it's really more about practicality and getting answers quickly for me. Um, and that's how, that's why I do it the way that I do. Here are the books that I am ready to let go of. Um, so this is one that we started at when we fir very first uh, began homeschooling. So I've had it for quite a while. Um, and I don't know, it just, it just didn't work. I don't have exact reasons why uh, some things don't work. Uh, it was just a feeling and it just wasn't engaging enough for my kids. Um, so these books are fantastic. We have very much loved these books. Uh, and fantastic for younger ones. My daughter, I got this for my daughter and we went through it. Oh, my son as well really enjoyed it as well. So it was kind of a bit of a project as we're going through and around Australia. We made a map and um, followed the story through. And it's really great. I love her, her books. This is another one of hers. Um, so yeah, they're fantastic books. Really, really highly recommend. Great illustrations and really great to see the, you know, diversity within our country as well. The changes in the landscape. It's fantastic. You can definitely tell that I like uh, this author. I got all of these books. This was fantastic. So um, obviously the other one was the animals and this one is the um, areas around Australia and the main attractions and some that we, you know, weren't familiar with as well. So the mapping is fantastic and just to get to understand what main things are found in what certain areas, what sort of states and things like that. Kids loved it. These are the read alouds that come with level one of read aloud. Um, all about reading sorry so they were fantastic my daughter loved them she loved them uh, these are just little books that i had um anticipated needing but didn't end up needing a little bit too school like those ones uh so this is grammar galaxy i'm not sure if you um have heard of it it is not as well known but i was super excited when i found that it was available i think i got it through booktopia um, it is a novel, so this is the novel part, and then these are the workbooks. And we tried and tried and tried with this curriculum. It was too long. Uh, we found it too long. The chapters were too long for us in terms of like trying to do grammar, <laughs> basically. Just felt it was just a bit too much, and it was trying to. It, you know, sometimes when you're trying to make something fun and the kids smell it, they kind of smell that. It's like they sense that you're trying to make something fun, so they just, they instinctually 
don't want to have fun. It kind of felt a little bit like that where we don't necessarily need to always try and fancy things up. Sometimes it's really just easier to say, you know, exclamation mark at the end of the sentence if you want to do this or you can use this punctuation for this reason and just do a couple of exercises instead of reading a big long story about a certain punctuation error (laughs) or grammar error and the the you know it was kind of cute and funny at times but other times it was just a bit like forced and didn't feel like it really had a lot of substance to it um I think that these things can be fantastic for other families I really do and I don't think there's anything wrong with this curriculum at all but I'm just saying that for us it felt forced And unfortunately, I think that my kids maybe were a little bit too old for it and that it would suit a younger one. But then I I struggled to believe that a younger one would be into the story enough or be able to keep up with the story. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm really interested to see if you have tried it. I think it's fantastic. I really love these kinds of approaches and thinking outside the box with curriculum. So I don't want you to think that, you know, oh, if it doesn't work for me, it won't work for you. This is just my honest opinion on this particular curriculum. It just didn't work for us. And there's a couple of reasons why it didn't work for us, but that doesn't mean it won't work for you. So um, definitely give it a go that she's got some great samples and things like that um, that you can try out for this curriculum. Um, and of course, there's the all about reading. So we already, um, I've already talked about this in many videos. Uh, it is phenomenal. And I am going to be gifting this to someone. Um, it is just, I've still, you know, we only went halfway through and we just skyrocketed with our reading for my daughter. So, and it was because of this program. So highly recommend it. It is not cheap, friends. It is not a cheap curriculum. It was an investment, but my daughter wanted to read and she was tired of the things that I had been trying with her so over it. She wanted like formal formal curriculum and I was shocked and it worked so (laughs) there you go sometimes what you don't think is going to work works and it was a winner for us and we we, she knows enough the foundations that we haven't had to go to the second level she's already gone past that and she's well and truly into the fourth level now Um, so there you go I think it's just she just needed that foundation um, for it So those are the books that we're going to be um, getting rid of. These are also books that we have loved and used and enjoyed. Um, These are all about just, you know, like cool little um, nature things and crafts. And we did quite a lot of them. Uh, They were fantastic. They never ended up looking as good as the pictures, which really annoyed us. I mean, how do they make it look so good? I don't know. It didn't, it didn't, it was kind of annoying. We did the, um, we did an autumn uh, beautiful butterfly wings. I can't find it in here. It was butterfly wings with autumn leaves, maple leaves, and it was such an undertaking. It took hours to create and it didn't look anywhere, oh, here it is, anywhere near as good as the picture. <laughs> I was so disappointed. Owls were just nowhere near as big as that. And I couldn't find any bigger leaves. And it was just super frustrating. So that was annoying. But they are beautiful books. And Riley usually looks through these and goes, can we do this? Can we do that? And um, yes, we've kind of had our go with these. And I'm ready to move on to some other things that might be a little bit more interesting for the age levels that I have. Great for younger ones, these ones, younger primary kids uh so that is literally all of the books that we are letting go I, I think we did pretty well considering we don't have a huge amount to begin with thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video let me know if you have cleaned out recently you know decluttered or how you go about decluttering your spaces are you due for a declutter has this inspired you um i'd really love to uh know what you think of categorizing books is that how you do it or do you do the whole you know rainbow color organization um i find it really interesting hearing what other people do and their approaches i know mine's a little 
different to a lot of people, but it works for us. It really does work for us, especially for homeschooling. Um, if we didn't homeschool, then maybe I'd be inclined to display it in a more aesthetically pleasing way. Um, but I do my best to have, you know, I think breathing space really does allow it to, to shine and to make the books look prettier and more interesting as well. Um, but it does support our learning and our journey. So I really, really um, wanted to share that process with you. I hope that you learned something. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did find it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help my channel. And if you haven't already, I really love you to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.